really like this gaming library because it's simple and uh, easy to use. Uh, some of the other libraries are super elaborate and uh, take a lot more time. So I decided that um, I wanted to read through all of the documentation of this library because that is still quite a bit. And uh, let's see if we can do this together. So I also have it uh, for later reference. And we'll start with the getting started. Um, so here we have installation. Now, the first thing it tells us about is that we need to have a web server uh, because the same origin policy will not work with just file colon game. And you can use PHP uh, to install this one. Um, in my case, I've actually rewritten their PHP as a uh, node server for my personal purposes. But um, yeah, you can use um, Apache and PHP to directly install it so that you have your Wiltmaster HTML, which requires a PHP backend um, to do the level editing. And if you don't need want to do level editing, then you don't really need the PHP backend. Uh, you just need to have, be able to host the JavaScript and the front end files. So moving on, um, this also talks about, oh, OK, so somebody has a node module um, that they already created. I guess I rewrote mine. Um, and there's also .NET or Python and Ruby. So you can see that in the other solutions. Uh, I won't be going over that. Uh, setting up your working environment. Um, so usual JavaScript stuff. So I'm not going to go into that right now. Um, which editor you use? Honestly, I like VS Code, but you can use whichever other thing you like. Um, directory structure so this is the general uh, directory structure for impact where you have your media you have your libraries with the game and the game entities and the game levels and then you have the actual impact library and the wiltmaster meister uh, level editor so I actually just like to drop that lib all together and just pull it up. Um, so basically, I just have like millionaire game or game millionaire entities and millionaire levels or whatever uh, game I'm building, right? Um, Pac Man or something. So. All the game resources uh, go in the media directory. The lib directory has all the JavaScript here. So for the purpose of reading the documentation, I'll just stick with what they have done here. Um, all right. And your own game source files in this case will go in your lib game. And the source files for entities will go under lib game entities. So basically, we're going to be working under libgame uh, in this case. All right, uh, HTML files. We are basically going to have here um, the main basic HTML, including a canvas object. Uh, baking is basically to minify and compress the game. Uh, Wiltmaster editor helps load the editor. Uh, so this is the general structure of the source code uh, where you basically define the name of your module as game.myfile and then you have your requires which are basically the dependencies um, and then you will define your actual module code. So the way Impact Engine works is it's not a library but a little bit of a framework it claims although I think it's a library um, provides a fully functional box though I agree with that where you can throw your code in impact runs on its own you just add your stuff to it and it'll be managed by the engine 
Your stuff in most cases are the subclasses of one of Impact's base classes. The most important one is the IG Entity class. Every object in the game has to be a subclass of the IG Entity. As soon as you start your game, it will set up an interval that calls the system ig.system.run method 60 times a second. And this method does some housekeeping stuff. So 60 times a second, um, let's call that uh, a second of a second. Or... Mm, Let's just call it small second. So a big second is the whole second, and a small second is one sixtieth of a second. And so IG system run runs in a small second. So this method does some housekeeping stuff and then calls your game's run method, which by default just calls update and draw on itself. Right. So so basically, system run will do some basic uh, preliminary stuff and call the update and draw essentially the our run method. And the IG games dot draw method is pretty boring. It just clears the screen and calls dot draw on each background entity layer, layer and entity. So essentially, we have a um, you know background layer. And there can be multiple. For example, you have the terrain and you have the trees and uh, different background layers. And then you have entities on them, such as the players and the enemies and spaceships or whatever thing you have. And the so the draw method will just clear it, call uh, draw on each update. We'll update the background layer positions and call update on each entity. So if you had like multiple background layers that need to move um, differently from each other, then that's basically going to be happening in the update by moving the position of the background. And the default update method of an entity moves it according to its physics properties, uh, such as the position, velocity, bounciness, and uh, so on, and takes the game's collision map into account. So, uh, all right, we'll get to collision maps, I guess, but basically uh, position, velocity, and kind of, you know, bounciness or step size or other things like that. Now, after all the entities have been updated, the game's check entities method is called, and this resolves all the dynamic collisions. So that is entity versus entity collisions. So let's say you have a play, um, player who collided with a bullet. So bullets an entity, players an entity. And so what we're going to do is we're going to update all the entities and then we are going to check all the entities uh, for all the things that collided, right? So those are the entity collisions. And this check entities also calls an entities check method, which if it overlaps with another entity and wants checks, see class reference for more details. Now you can overwrite any of these methods in your own entity and game subclasses, and you can provide your own logic. And then if you want, call the original methods with this dot parent. And remember, this is all happening for each and every frame. So for each small second, unless the browser can't keep up and then it might be a little bit slower and it might not be a small second. It might be something larger. All right. So that's our uh, getting started. And then in the next video, let us continue with the... Uh, docs here. So we will go over. So we did the getting started. Um, I'm going to skip about the level editor for now and we're going to go to 
we're going to skip working with assets as well let's go to collisions next 